Most cars are simply transportation, a physical way to get from here to there. The special ones move us emotionally. The A80 Toyota Supra, star of the Fast and Furious movies, attained mythical status. And 21 years after its demise, there's a new one, the 2020 GR Supra. But its origin story is a bit complicated and controversial. For enthusiasts that don't know that this shares a powertrain and architecture with the BMW Z4, I'm not sure where you've been. It hasn't exactly been kept a secret. And for those who might find issue with that, uh, two things. One, uh, teaming up with BMW to do a sports car, not exactly a bad thing. And second of all, we got a new Supra out of the deal. Let's acknowledge there will be two camps, one judging this the bastard child of corporate cost cutting, the other rejoicing that there's another world-class sports car. I'm not here to change minds, only to inform. Just remember, automakers are in the business of making money and sports cars don't. Toyota could have used these resources to make another crossover. Instead, it built a halo and a gift for enthusiasts. This is sort of a freestyle event. We've been brought to Summit Point Autosports Park in the great state of West Virginia to see what Supra can do. If you don't know, this stands for Gazoo Racing. There's a stroll down memory lane. Let's not forget the first two Supras were variants of the Celica. I always liked the origami creases of Gen 2 and the sunshade. It was not a spoiler. Chief Engineer Tatsuya Tata is on hand to give us the lowdown. And so let's say, you know, if you wanted another 50 horsepower, or, you know, yeah, I mean, that's really easy to do. But then you're always going to be looking for more and more, and it's an endless cycle. Tata was the first Toyota person of contact with BMW in 2012 and guided Supra to become the car you see here with this dedicated wide sports car chassis. So he actually, he has had almost no contact with their Z14. Yeah. He insists that once the hard points of the architecture and powertrain were set in 2014, the two companies parted ways to complete development of their respective cars. And if you're wondering if the Supra will be available as a drop top. So since day one, if you want a convertible, please, we are, the offering of the Z4 is there. <laughs> BMW ended up targeting Porsche Boxster, yeah, Toyota, to, the Cayman. Before I hit the track, some quick details on what I'll be working with. Under the aluminum hood is a three liter twin scroll turbocharged inline six cylinder. I think we all know where that is sourced from. In Supra, it delivers 335 horsepower and 365 pound feet of torque. That's 47 horses and four pound feet less than the Z4 M40i, if you're keeping track. GR Supra is 46 pounds lighter than the BMW. I do like that sound, and apparently American versions get the throatiest engine growl because of worldwide noise standards. Go USA. The only transmission is a ZF8 speed automatic with the kind of electronic shift lever that I'm lukewarm on. There is no manual gearbox, but there are these. Sport mode tightens up the usual aspects like transmission mapping, throttle response, steering weight, stability control sensitivity, and the firmness of the adaptive dampers. These can be set to the combination of your liking. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. The track Toyota has sectioned off for us is full of tight turns and blind corners. This is not a situation where we follow the lines of a pro driver. We're allowed to go out on our own and get in as much trouble as we want. Okay, first test is very important. Yes, plenty of helmet room. <laughs> Toyota claims a zero to 60 time of 4.1 seconds. A skosh slower than the more powerful Z4 M40i. <laughs> okay, that's a good sign, that's fun. I take the first lap easy to learn the course. Torque is available right off the line, very low. Nice power band. Like the Mazda Miata, Supra is very predictable and flingable when pushed hard in the corners. The much more powerful Toyota adds extra grip and confidence, so it never gets scary. The best way I could describe Supra's dynamic is like a Miata times two. It's a hoot. In sport mode, which eliminates a level of stability control, Supra shows you a good time, but still has your backside. Toyota says stability control can be turned off completely. 
we're at a buck. 15. Watch the panic in my face approaching the turn too hot and relief discovering excellent Brembo brakes. Okay, I need to pay attention to driving and less to you. I can admit my mistakes. I have not driven the BMW Z4, but have to imagine that the suspension of the two cars are tuned differently and that the Bavarian has a slightly higher center of gravity due to the retractable roof mechanism. <laughs> oh, this is, this is too much fun. And no doubt the aftermarket will wring more power out of the buttery smooth inline six, if not void the warranty. So the chief engineer was talking about how he knows that people are going to tune this thing and he's okay with that, but that it's his baby, that it's very balanced right out of the gate. And uh, I can understand that. This is a very balanced car, very communicative. Supra is rear drive with an active differential that can send all power left or right. Weight balance is a perfect 50-50. Tires are Michelin Pilot Super Sports on 19-inch forged aluminum wheels that are staggered in width front to back. I have it in sport mode. Uh, transmission always in the right gear. Don't know that I would really miss a manual transmission in this car. Whoa. I will admit something, I've never been a super guy, uh, but uh, after four laps here, <laughs> I could be a super guy. And just so you know, I talked them into a few extra laps. My excuse was to reposition my GoPros for more shots. It's like getting an extra fast pass at Disneyland. Wow, this thing is amazing in the corners. Holy cow, uh, holy cow being a technical term. I don't know if you've got 55 grand laying around. This might not be a bad way to spend it. Let's face it, most super time will be spent in everyday driving conditions, and this is what owners will gaze upon. Storage is at a premium in this cabin, and let's not forget, Supra is strictly a two-seater. Talking to other automotive riders at the event, even the larger ones felt fine in the well-bolstered seats. A knee pad was added after Akio Toyota, uh, yes, that Toyota, complained after hard laps. He's a really good driver. Hardware is solid, carbon fiber trim is the genuine thing. It should come as no surprise that in here, there's a lot of BMW on startup. You will hear the BMW chime. And then of course, there's the interface. I think you know where this is going. The climate and radio buttons are right out of Bavaria. And then there's iDrive. It's all the same right down to the graphics and that it's also a touchscreen. And the fact that Apple CarPlay is wireless. Uh, nope, no Android Auto. It was explained to me that changing things up here even a little meant rewriting hundreds of thousands of lines of code. Toyota decided to pass the savings on to buyers. All right, a little on-road action. I do like that engine sound. Since this is the practical part of the review, I'll get fuel economy out of the way. The EPA rates it at an average of 26 miles per gallon on specified premium. During the hour-long highway drive to the track, I saw 32 MPG on the computer. Remember the days when you had to buy either a comfortable car or one that was really fun to drive and then live with your decision? don't have to do that anymore. Adaptive suspension is terrific. The best of both worlds. That I forgot to hook up my mic would make it seem this car has lots of wind and road noise. It doesn't. Supra's on the quiet side. A couple could press this into grand touring duty and be happy. Those adaptive dampers don't just keep roll and dive at bay. They also analyze body movements and cancel out any bounding from the 97.2 inch wheelbase. And really, unless you have kids, uh, I can see this as a daily driver. It's pretty comfortable. It's quiet. Unless you uh, push it and hear the engine, and you want to hear the engine. I find steering weight to be just right in both regular and sport modes, and the electric power steering offers up decent road feel. Wow, it's really a shame. These roads here in Virginia are terrific, great for driving, unfortunately. We've been warned that law enforcement is draconian about enforcement, and the speed limits are set really low. 35 miles an hour through here? Ugh, this is killing me. But it's keeping me out of jail. Seriously, there are other automotive riders that have found out the hard way. Don't speed in Virginia.
Toyota product planners believe that Supra will skew 90% male when it comes to sales, so I'm not being sexist when I say, hey guys, uh, tell your wife that it's a practical hatchback, you might have a fighting chance buying one. The hatch is lightweight composite for a lower center of gravity. It's even lower than the 86. There is no spare tire, just an inflation kit. Uh, need to haul things? Toyota has the Highlander in RAV4 for that. This bag is a little smaller than a standard carry-on suitcase. For a week-long road trip on windy roads, Supra would be just fine. Truth be told, I felt this car was way over-designed when I first saw it, but spending time with the outrageous curves they're growing on me, especially in outrageous colors. The matte silver is very cool too. And really, the grille is positively conservative when compared to Camry and Prius. Manufactured at the Magna Steyr factory in Graz, Austria, a new way of producing the deep steel fenders had to be found. This car is based heavily on the FT1 concept shown at the Detroit Auto Show in 2014. There's a lot of faux venting. Some of it hints to functional airflow that racing versions will gain. Chief engineer Tadasan says up front, much of the blocked off sections are for tuners to work with. So if you look at the old Supras, the first thing that everybody did was raise the boost. Mm. And of course, uh, they blew their engines right away. And they had a lot of problems and issues with that. So your engine, transmission, differential. Mm. So when you raise the power on those, mm. you really need to think about cooling. Mm. And that is the, that's the biggest headache for many of the tuners. So in this Supra, he's trying to incorporate as much as possible at this production level to accommodate that in the future. So if you look at the radiator openings in the front, mm. so when he asked the request to the designers, make it as big as you can, they're like, well, it's hard to really get that beautiful balance. Mm. It becomes challenging. But they made it as big as they could right here, and, and the designers made that a reality. But actually, it's too big. And if you look really closely, the bottom side has been sealed. The bottom half has been sealed. So for future people who are going to tune it and modify it, that part can be added for extra capacity of cooling. And there's another reason for the uh, uh, of uh, sealing the bottom half. When you seal that, it creates a canard effect. So when you are on the track, you'll be able to feel it. And so it adds vehicle stability. With shipping, retail pricing starts at around $51,000 for the base 3.0 model. 3.0 premium starts at about 55 grand. And the only option is a driver's assist package for $1,200 that adds adaptive cruise control. This is the launch edition. 1,500 will be made. I'm guessing they've been spoken for already, but uh, hurry to your local dealer to be sure. Summing up the 2020 Supra, lovers gonna love, haters gonna hate. Let's not forget the beloved fourth generation A80 Supra was canceled 21 years ago because no one was buying it. Everyone involved in this Supra project deserves sainthood status. It's a blast to drive, has design you won't find anywhere else, and it's easy to live with. Those who complain about the source components don't have to buy a Supra. Those that do will have a wicked fun sports car. It's as simple as that. I'll point out the dilemma every automaker finds itself in by pointing you at the Toyota 86, a very fun sports coupe that, uh, again, no one buys. We were able to drive them on the track as well. I saw Tim Steven from Roadshow exit one with a big grin saying it was just as fun as the Supra, only in a different way. I would agree. People gripe about the lack of sports car, but no one buys them. You have to vote with your checkbook, people. Lucky me, I had dinner with Tetsuya Tada and his awesome translator, Toshi Hayama, and I learned that at one point, Supra was cancelled by middle management. It was Akio Toyota, a true enthusiast and guy whose name is on the building, that saved the program. Buy him a Sapporo the next time you see him, <laughs> the big one. And to be clear, Toyota engineers seem to have built Supra for the tuner crowd. There are even holes ready for extra bracing. Mm. Mm. This will probably be one of the first things that third party uh, parts makers will make. The platform, in a distant way, is shared with the new 3 Series, and of course, there will be a new M3. Many aftermarket parts will fit on all three cars, M3, Z4, and Supra. So the ability to upgrade them will be easier, since it's more lucrative for the aftermarket to produce parts. It's a win all the way around.
Oh, there you go. That's my first look at the all new fifth generation Toyota Supra. Enthusiasts rejoice. This is a fun car to drive and reasonably priced for what you get, though I am assuming that uh, dealerships will demand that you pay $15,000 for extra special floor mats, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.